Hey, welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Koja Kuna and I love drawing. And that's why I'm here, to draw with you. And today I want to show you how I approach certain um, overwhelming scenes to really abbreviate and uh, to quickly get something onto paper before you even can get overwhelmed. And this is based on one of the drawings that you have seen in a previous sketchbook tour that I showed. There was one drawing particularly popular and that was a bright pink church with a line on top. I did it in five minutes because it was raining. Otherwise, I might have taken way more time and the drawing might not have been that great because I might be overthinking things or getting into detail too much. But by blocking out the shape, the main shape of the building uh, with bright pink Posca marker, I already put down the bases and then I could quickly draw a line on top. And before it started to rain, I was finished. So I want to show you that approach. I will use that same Posca marker and a crayon. And hopefully it's helpful for you whenever you are on location or drawing from uh, a photo uh, to not get into detail too much, but just really have fun with your tools. Let's get started. The Posca marker is really great. Um, it comes in many colors and um, you can sort of paint with it. It is really a chunky marker. They come also in different sizes. Uh, but I like the chunkiness of it. If you don't have a Posca marker, you can take this technique also using uh, gouache because that has the same sort of bright and opaque uh, consistency. If you do not have gouache, you could also do it with uh, bright watercolors, for example. So no need to run to the store. Um, I am going to use my pink Posca marker today. The sketchbook that I'm using today is my Madeline Island School of the Arts sketchbook. Um, they gave it to me when I left after teaching there. Um, it has quite nice paper. It's not too thick. So let's see how uh, the Posca pen will hold on to it. And for my drawing, I am using a reference photo of the Sacré-Cœur in Paris which is quite an overwhelming building and there's a lot of people around it. So this is uh, the typical thing that you can approach um, in this way without being overwhelmed by it all. And why am I choosing this one too? Well, because I am going to be in Paris in October again. I will be teaching there and there are just a few spots left for that amazing week that I will be um, hosting together with Cynthia Morris, Marty Gregg and Marcus McAllister. And together we have created an amazing program for you. So if you want to join, be quick because seats are filling up. So let's get started. I am going to outline quickly the building, not outline it. Um, actually, I am blocking it out and I'm not even really looking that um, closely at the details because I just want to cover a whole lot in one go so that I can keep going and um, without thinking too much about uh, all the detail. And also this sketchbook isn't really, really large. I usually use a big, bigger sketchbook, but um, I wanted to use this one because I just got it. <laughs> so it's fun to use. Um, yeah, okay, so this is my uh, sort of my start. And it ha this has to dry before I can draw on top. You can see that it's crooked and that I am leaving out these uh, little bits and pieces. Hopefully that can work as um, negative space for all those people that are in front. So that might be fun to play with. I'm 
let that dry for a bit. You can see that the paper buckles a little bit. I don't really mind that. It's just, you know, the paper reacting to my tool. Um, it can also happen that if you have a little bit of a too thin paper and you're watercoloring that your paper will buckle and it might annoy you. Then it's smart to choose a thicker paper like a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper. But if you feel uh, precious about that, because usually those kinds of sketchbooks are a little bit more expensive, and then it might be hard to actually dare and draw in it, um, then it might be smart to just use cheap paper and have fun with it and embrace all the quirkiness that belongs to it. Okay, let's see if I can make sense of this. It's tiny and I have a very blunt tool, so I have to abbreviate. And I think this is a really good um, uh, exercise to learn to abbreviate because abbreviation and simplifying is really key to having fun in your sketchbook and not overthinking and uh, not being overwhelmed by where you are and what you want to draw. So I'm really just trying to find my bearings. Of the different elements. And if I'm not super accurate, that's all fine. This is not about accuracy. This is about having fun. And what I notice is um, the more I have, uh, I get into the drawing, the more confident I get with my lines and the way I want to translate the things. Um, so sometimes in the beginning of your uh, sketch, you might be a, a little bit insecure about what you're doing, uh, where it's going. But that is one of those moments that you just need to keep going for a bit. Just trust the process and also trust yourself as an artist. You can do this. Um, you can have fun doing this, you know, as long as you are just open to try things, then uh, yeah, you can totally do this. Things don't align, which is also great. Um, it doesn't have to be, you, you don't follow the lines that are there. You, the, the, the big shape is just a guide um, and really a way to get started, basically. Where otherwise you might be starting with, uh, with line and then color. This way you start with a bright color that isn't even really there. And with that bright color you have skipped the whole part of measuring and trying to get it right. Because, well, it's kind of a blob, basically. And then you start drawing on top. And because it's a blob, you might feel a little bit more free to draw freely on top instead of trying to get it accurately onto the page. Because what's the fun in that, you know? The people in here are so tiny. If I would draw bigger, I would probably be able to draw some more serious people. But with this blunt tool, I have the excuse to uh, not be accurate at all. Oops, I'm even breaking my tool now. So it's also shorter. I really don't have a lot of control. So what I'm trying to do is just really create some figures. There's a lot of overlapping figures as well. 
as good as I can with this blunt tool I'm trying to add those in and if you want more accuracy then you could pick up a different tool I'm just sort of mark making to indicate that there's a lot going on here and I might indicate that there's stairs and there's some people closer by that I might be able to capture a little bit better and then there's more overlap so I'm looking at these people as just sort of one big shape with some texture in there. I think that way I am describing how busy these stairs are with tourists. Let's see what happens if I add stairs here. Also, I'm not looking at the perspective of the stairs. I'm just really indicating that this goes up. Something's going on here still. There's people here as well, standing there. I think that indicates enough for describing what is happening. Maybe to add a little bit shading because that might balance out the darker bits in the building as well. But again, not too accurate, just having some fun. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. I had fun and I hope you will have fun trying this technique too. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and if you hit that bell button then you will get a notification every time that I post a new video which is every single Tuesday. If you like that and you want to support that then head on over to my Patreon page because you can join me there. I give you even more tips and advice and other inspiration there. And uh, for just a few dollars a month, you can already be part of that awesome community. So I welcome you there. I also mentioned Paris Sketchbook, the workshop that I will be teaching in October. Check out the link that I am adding below this video because it's going to be a magical week in our studio in Paris. You will feel like a Parisian artist and enjoy the city, but also enjoy growing as an artist in the studio uh, with all the fun assignments and um, exercises that we will have for you. It will be so much fun. I hope you can join. Next week I'll be back with another Draw Tip Tuesday. See you then. Bye!